Hey everyone, it's Elaine and welcome back to my channel. I just want to pop in here now and show you the completed journal that I used that little doodad. I did a quickie a little while back and I showed you something that I had never seen before and that was using a cuff link on our journal covers to use as your closure. Um, yeah. I got a lot of comments about it. People even called me brilliant and that I was a genius. <laughs> it just cracked me up. But I will have to say I was pretty proud of myself. Anyhow, this is the quick little journal that I did. Now I'm going to tell you, it's not real fancy inside. I don't have a whole lot of pockets and all that kind of stuff. This journal is meant to be on the go. It's meant for me to scribble, for me to hold things, um, for me to make notes. Um, as you can see, it's kind of flat. So just real quick, though, I'm going to tell you all again what I did just in case anybody missed it. Again, this is a cuff link. And what I simply did was, let me show you, this was my base, Amazon packaging, just folded in half. All right. And then what I did is I... You took a cuff link, uh, there you go, D took a cuff link, and I did some reinforcements so that the cuff link could go through and hopefully not tear. So I found where I wanted it to be, thinking that I'm going to stitch the fabric on. So I needed it to, to be far enough in that it wouldn't get in the way of my sewing machine foot, okay? So I put those reinforcements on each side of the paper. Then on this side, I just took some of the stickiest tape I had, which is Tyvek for me. It's kind of what they use in, um, I think, putting insulation and stuff and, and siding foam on, on buildings and stuff. It's got a little bump. Let's see if you can see. Yeah, it's got a little bump because of the cuff link, but it's nothing that's noticeable. And I have to tell you, it has stayed sturdy in that place, I truly believe, because I taped it down so well. So then I just simply took and put a layer of my upholstery fabric on the inside and a layer of my upholstery fabric on the outside, and I just sewed it all the way around. Now, another little tip I want to say to you about sewing. Always start on one of your back corners, all right? Because you can see that's where you're going to, when you start sewing, then you're going to come back. You always want to reverse when you start sewing. So there's a little bit of a double, well, probably actually a triple stitch right there. And then I go all the way around it so that on the front cover, it's just one nice single stitch. And then when I come back again, as you can see, um, there's the triple stitch where you come up, you go back, and then you want to close on your corner. So always do that on your back corner. It won't be as noticeable. That's always where you want to start and end your stitches. That's my opinion. Anyhow, so then on this, what I did is this is just a digital. And I have a lot of dies. And if you're like me, sometimes they get a little dusty. We don't use them as much as we should. But they are great to use for our scraps. So this is just a pine branch. And I took a marker and kind of highlighted it and made it a little darker in spots. And this is wallpaper. Now let me show you. This is, hold on, it's sticky. This is a little bit of a textured wallpaper. It's kind of woven. And I just really liked the texture of it, as you can see. So I did, that's what I did my pine cone out of, okay? And then just at the bottom, again, scraps. This was a piece of scrap ribbon. And this was some kind of something that I unraveled off of something I keep all my threads. Years ago, someone told me that she throws all of her threads in a little bucket, and then if she needs a little gob of something, or she wants to make a little bird's nest, or whatever, she's got threads. So that's where I kind of got that idea, all right? So I think it's pretty cool. That's the trees with the moss and everything. So then on the inside, I haven't done anything to the inside cover. I thought about maybe putting a strip of something so that I could, you know, slip a pen in there. But other than that, like I said, there's not really a whole lot going on in here. This is where I can tape some post-its and, and everything. But 
for the most part, it's meant to write and, um, and just play in. Um, I did use the same digital set and then just miscellaneous papers that I kind of had handy. I didn't dig real hard <laughs> for the papers for this journal. So anyhow, you know, like I said, and there's my little centerpiece. And, and I did use a dark green waxed um, cord to do my three hole pamphlet stitch. And my printer kind of was messing up for a little bit there when I was doing some of the two sided papers. Yeah, I like doing digitals on two sides. I don't like having to try to stain the back side. Plus, I have an inkjet. And if you know anything about inkjets, you really don't want to get that ink wet. So that's one another reason why I usually do my digitals two-sided. Okay? Um, and just some other miscellaneous papers. So that's really it. And again, if you have any questions about the cuff link or you see somebody else do it, say, hey, that came from Elaine. <laughs> Anyhow, that's my little journal, and I hope you appreciated it and uh, found it a little interesting. So remember, I do my best to do a video every Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. You can find me on Facebook. I have a page. I have a group. And you can even stop by my personal one and give me a shout out. I'm on Instagram and Twitter and Pinterest, and I do have a small Etsy shop. I have some auction tags in there. I have some blueprints, and I also have some leather book plates and maybe a couple digitals. Um, I don't really have a whole lot, but I do okay. So anyhow, I do appreciate the time that you came by to see me. And again, if you have any questions about anything, please give me a shout out. Um, just make the comment down below. And I appreciate you coming by. See you in the next video. Bye.